In this video, we're going to introduce how to determine whether something is a tautology or a contradiction using a truth tree. Now, whether we do tautologies or contradictions, they each have different methods for starting out the truth tree. So it's important to understand what you're working with and what you're trying to prove. Let's start with a tautology. We say that a woof alpha is a tautology, meaning it's always true, if not alpha has a closed tree. In other words, we're going to assume that it's not a tautology, and we're going to show that every single branch closes. In other words, if it's not a tautology, we get a contradiction. Sort of like when we were doing our indirect truth tables before. So with this question, I say, I want to show that not P and Q, if and only if not P or not Q, is a tautology. So what I need to do is I need to take this, my alpha, I need to negate it as my initial assumption, because we're going to say this is not a tautology and we're going to show we get contradictions. That's what I've done here. As you'll see, we have our alpha here, and I have negated it out front with the not operator. So let me just clean up this page. I'll turn the lines on so that way everything is neat and orderly, and let's get into this. The first thing we're going to have to do is not by conditional. So remember, if we have P if and only if Q and it's negated, there's two possible outcomes here. This just means that P and Q have different values. So either we're going to get not P and Q on one side, or we'll get P and not Q on the other side. So that way the values are different. That's what we're going to have here. So let's start these off with our branching paths. In the left-hand side, let's assume that the left side is true and the right side is false. So we're going to get not P and Q on as our first thing, and we're going to get not, not P or not Q as our second thing. So in other words, the left side is true, the right side is false. And on our other branching path, we'll get the opposite. So we're going to get not, not P and Q by taking the left side to be false, and we'll get not P or not Q by taking the right-hand side to be true. So these are our two situations. So this is line two and line three, and these both come from one, and this is not by conditional decomposition. Okay, I have a choice what I wanna do here. I think what I'll do just to make it simple, after we check one off, cause we're done with it, we'll go to line four, and I'm just gonna get rid of the not, not P and Q on the right. So we'll do double negation to get rid of those negations. So we'll be left with P and Q. Check that off. That comes from line two, and that's double negation. Now, since I have P and Q, why not? Let's just get rid of the and, so we know we get P and we get Q. That'll be line five and six. So from line four, we're doing and decomposition. Well, at this point on the right side, we only have one thing left to do, which is to take the branching paths with not P or not Q. So let's do or decomposition, which will give us not P, not Q. So this is line seven. This comes from line three and this is or decomposition. At this point, our right branch is closed because we have P and we have not P, which closes that branch. And we have not Q and we have Q, which closes our right branch. So that side's done. Now I'm realizing I'm going to need a little bit more space on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the question and I'm going to move this up so that way we do not have to scroll onto another page. Okay. So our right side's done, now we have to do our left side. We have a choice here. We can do not P and Q first, or we can do not not P or not Q first. Now, if you remember, if we have not P or Q being true, this means that P or Q is false, which means that P is false and Q is false in order for that to be true, which is the same thing as saying not P and not Q are both true. So in other words, we don't have to take branching paths if we do not or decomposition first. So let's take care of that. In fact, I'll do it in yellow, why not? So in line eight and line nine, we're going to get not not P and not not Q. So this comes from line three on the left branch, and this is not or decomposition. So hopefully by now you're more comfortable with that rule. At this point in lines 10 and 11, let's get rid of those double negations there, since those don't help us very much, so we'll get P and Q. So from line eight and line nine, this is just double negation. Okay, there's only one more thing left to do in our tree. Let's do it in green. We're gonna decompose not P and Q. So this is going to give us two branching paths. On one of the sides of this path, we're going to get that not 
P is true, and on the other side, we're going to get that not Q is true. So again, from that reasoning, we know not P and Q is true if P and Q is false, which means either P is false or Q is false, which means not P is true or not Q is true. So that's going to give us not P on the left, not Q on the right. This is line 12, and this is justified from line 2 which is not and decomposition. And at this point, both of these branches close because we have not P and we have P, and we have not Q and we have Q, which gives us a contradiction. So we just have enough room on this page in order to determine that yes, all of these branches close, therefore what we looked at is a tautology. Now, one thing you can do in a tree if you want, if you have a long gap, is you can put a little line there just to symbolize that. Uh, those things are connected. It looks a little bit nicer, especially when you go from one branch to the other, but that is totally up to you if you want to do that or not. Anyways, that's a tautology. The important part with tautologies is how we start. We have to start by negating it and then showing that the non-tautological assumption does not hold. With a contradiction, it's quite straightforward. If something is a contradiction, then the tree should close. So if we want to prove that alpha is a contradiction, we just have to work with alpha itself and close all the branches. So I want to show that Q or R and not Q or R is a contradiction. So let's work with that. Okay. Well, we have and in our first line. So this makes things really easy because we can just break one apart. So we know that uh, Q or R is true and we know that not Q or R is true. So these both come from line one and this is and decomposition. Done. Okay, next step. Uh, let's do not Q or R for the same reason as before. We know then that not Q is going to be true and not R is going to be true. So that's line four and five. This comes from three, and this is not or decomposition. Remember, we want to do and decomposition and not or decomposition as soon as we can because we don't get our branching paths here. Now, the only thing left to do is to do Q or R. So we're going to get some branching paths here. We're going to get one case where Q is true, one case where R is true. So this is line six. This comes from two or decomposition. And we'll find that both of these close because we have Q, not Q, R, not R. So we get a contradiction on both sides. It closes. Okay. Easy. Therefore, we know that this is a contradiction. Because there's no way that we can make this tree true. So if I take off the lines here, you can see it in all of its beautiful glory. In fact, let's take a look at the previous tree without the lines on the page so we can see it in its beautiful glory. Everything just looks nicer without lines on the page. I don't know why that is. It's just a fact of life. Anyways, one more practice question. Let's show that this monster is a tautology. So our first step is setting it up. We want to prove that this beast is a tautology. So that's our alpha. What we have to do is we have to negate this. So we have to take the negation of all these things, which means we're going to have a lot of brackets here. What we're going to have is we're going to have not if A and B, then C is the same thing as A arrow B arrow C. Okay, and this is our assumption. So we're going to have branching paths here, and this might get a little bit long. Hopefully we can fit this all on one page. So on our left side, remember, it's going to be either one of those is true and one of those is false, or vice versa. So on our left side, let's just assume that the left is false. So we'll get not A and B arrow C, and that means we'll also get A arrow B arrow C. And on the right hand side, we'll assume that A and B arrow C is true. And we'll then assume that not A arrow B arrow C is false. Okay, so this is line two and line three. That comes from line one. And this is our not biconditional decomposition. Okay, I can already tell this is going to be <laughs> a bit of a gross proof. But the nice thing is first we have not arrow. So remember, if we have not A arrow B, what we're saying is when is this not true? 
it's not true when a is true and b is false, which is the same thing as saying that not b is true. So we can break our not arrows into the antecedent being true and the condition and the consequent being false. So what this means is that on line four and line five, we could say check off two, for example, here. So in this case, we'll get that a and b is true and we'll get that not c is true. Okay, so this comes from line two, and this is not arrow decomposition. I can actually do this on the right side too. So that'll come from line three, it's different. I'll justify it on the right, but it's the same step. So we're gonna get A is true, and we're gonna get not B arrow C is true. Okay, well on the right side, this is actually nice because we have another case of the not arrow. So we're gonna get that B is true and we're gonna get that not C is true there. So that's gonna come from line five and it's the same idea. It's not arrow decomposition. Okay, I have nothing yet that is wrong on the right side. There's no contradictions yet, but we're pretty much one step there. So why not just finish it? Okay, so we need to do A and B arrow C, which means we're gonna have branching paths. Either the antecedent is false or the consequent is true. So we're gonna have one case, let's do this in white, where C is true, and we'll have one case where we have not A and B, so the antecedent is false. Now our C branch, we can finish because we see that we have C and we have not C. So we have a contradiction there that's closed. So we should label this before we go on. This is eight. This comes from line two. This is arrow decomposition. We're gonna have some more branching paths here. So not A and B is going to give us either not A or not B. So that comes from line eight. And this is not and decomposition on line nine. Okay. At this point too, we can then close off not A and not B because we have A and we have not A, and we have B and we have not B, so we get contradictions there. Okay, so our one side is now completely done. We can now focus on the left side. So we have line 10 down here. Let's just make a little path here so we know that we're continuing. And for convenience, because we have A and B and we have not C, let's just get rid of this A and B. Let's break this into components. So we're gonna be left with A, B. So this comes from line four. And this is and decomposition. Okay, so we still have just one thing left over here. In fact, what I need to do is I need to get rid of this question at the top. And I think I need to start moving things up so we can keep everything on the page. Okay, so we're gonna get branching paths because we have A arrow, B arrow, C which means either the antecedent is false or the consequent is true. So when we check off from line three here, we're gonna get either not A or we're going to get B arrow C. So this is line 12, this comes from line three, and this is arrow decomposition. Okay, our not A is now going to close because we have not A and A, so we get a contradiction. Our last step will be another disjunction here with B arrow C. So this will break off into two paths. By the conditional, either B will be false or C will be true, which means we're going to get either not B or we'll get C. So that one's done. This comes from 12 and that's arrow decomposition. At this point, we can now close these branches because we get not B and B, that's a contradiction, and we get not C and C, that's a contradiction. Therefore, everything closes. So we know that this is therefore a tautology. And it's a tautology because the negation are of original sentence closed. So that's it for tautologies and contradictions. At this point, you should be able to complete the following exercises. So I want you to try with your own truth tree to see whether one is a tautology and two is a contradiction. Somehow you can post your answers in the comments below, go for it, but I think it's gonna be incredibly difficult to do with truth trees. Uh, anyways, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you when I can.